that kind of language is implicitly threatening to people whose day-to-day concerns are, how do I increase my shareholder value? You know, how do I keep control of my business? How do I address my, 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 my actual uh, down-to-earth problems? People like that, you know, you, when you walk into their offices and say, you should use all open source for your business because sharing is good and hoarding is evil, it doesn't work. It just does as communication. It fails. I am not against business. I don't believe in abolishing business. I do business myself. But I believe business should not dominate all of life. The rules of society should not be chosen primarily to please business. In early 1998, majority usage in the community went from free software to open source in six weeks flat in the late spring, early summer of 1998. And that told me that there had been huge pent-up demand in the community for a way of, of explaining what we were doing that was, that was more effective. The whole attitude in the trade press and in the investor community completely turned around, 180 degrees. The same people who had spent years and years and years sneering dismissively at free software and you know talking about you know sandal-wearing freaks with long hair, those very same people within a year were falling all over themselves to write laudatory articles about the wonders of open source and peer review. And this was really funny because it was the same software, and in most cases, the same people. Linux happened without the help of people with deep pockets, or even despite the help. How can we keep from destroying the magic by pouring all of this money into Linux? When, when Linux started to become commercialized, People said, oh, well, you know, we'd like to keep it as our own little project and things like that, and nobody should be making any money off of it. Well, in the real world, people make money off of things. The, you know, in the United States, it's a capitalistic society. In Europe, it's a capitalistic society. And in order for companies to start using Linux, they want to have somebody sitting there who can give them support, who can sell them the hardware, who can do all this type of thing, and these people who sell this hardware and sell the support are going to make money. Not every one of us is a hacker. Actually, very few of us will take the effort to download our own Linux from the net. Even fewer will tackle with the code itself in order to improve it. Though Linux was hard to use, customers valued strongly its reliability and open source code. There was an opportunity for companies with new visions. For Red Hat, it wasn't important that we ship a better operating system than Microsoft's or Sun Microsystems, it becomes really important that we ship an operating system that solves a problem for our customers that they cannot solve using the traditional proprietary binary only software. We're recognizing what we were doing was we were building technology and then giving it away. So we said, well, how do you make money doing this? And uh, of course, we would go to California to Silicon Valley and everyone would say, well, you cannot make money in the software business giving your technology away. And we would come back and we'd talk to our customers and we'd realize the only thing that kept our customers loyal to what we were doing was that we did give away our technology. For the very first time, they had control over the technology they're using. The real value in those software products is the active maintenance down, down the line, the continuing support relationship between the vendor and you. And that's what gives software fundamentally the characteristics of a service industry rather than a manufacturing industry. Linux is flourishing in the internet server appliance area. But because there has not been an easy to use software for home users, it has only a small margin of the desktop market. No project with its graphical interface tries to fill that gap. But hacker elitism still seems to follow Linux. 
Samalla kun Linus Turvalsin työ poikii uusia miljonääriä ja miljardööriä, hän aiheuttaa harmaita hiuksia maailman toistaiseksi rikkaimmalle miehelle, Bill Gatesille. Microsoft has a very traditional model. They make closed source code, they put it on a CD, they sell that. Now, they take on all the burden of development themselves, everything goes back through them. Once you're in that business, it's very hard to change your culture. It's very hard to change your business to one where you cooperate, where programmers are used to releasing code. It's easier to make money off of closed source products uh, if you uh, don't need to or you have the huge market share so for example um, Microsoft does not have a huge incentive to open source their code right now and it would probably cut into their profits so they're I don't think they're going to do it or at least not willingly there's um, algorithms that you may in fact want to keep proprietary for example I know of certain compression algorithms that companies have put a lot of work into uh, for things like streaming media and they don't want people to know how they do that because it's exactly how they do that that is the value of their product. Fighting between Linus, who's the leader of Linux, and Bill Gates, who's the, the, the leader of Microsoft, and it becomes really personal. And for our resort question, whose lips are these? <laughs> I'd say there's a Bill Gates lips telling another lie. <laughs> the acceptance of Linux has been helped enormously by the fact people have known that Linux exists through the news. And the David versus Goliath story helped there, but I don't think it was particularly true. You're a socialist. That's one of the labels pe people put on. Is that true? Det var ju ingen hemlighet jag tillhörde radikalerna i slutet av 60-talet med gamla studenthus och studenternas FN-förening som organiserade nästan alla demonstrationer på den tiden. My personal belief system is more one of personal honor. And I don't care what anybody else does. Um, I want to do what I feel is right. At Linus håller sig oerhört på ett mycket bestämt avstånd från det där, från, från politik. Och det hänger säkert ihop med att han så att säga skadades lite under sin tidigare, tidigaste barndom av en mycket aktiv och politisk far. It is also about having a social conscience. And if you call that socialism, then Yeah, I guess I'm socialist. Att han är radikal inom ett ganska bestämt område där han själv skapar ramarna för sitt område. Och, eller han går, som jag upplever det, oerhört ogärna ut i, i det där i, i lösa, lite flummiga samhällspolitiska resonemang. Och där finns den här skiljelinjen mellan den här pragmatikern som vill syssla med någonting som är kännbart och inte låta liksom ångan åka ut genom det där öronen och flumma iväg om någonting som, som vi gärna gjorde på 60-talet. This is a community you can take, but you must give back. I am very pleased to announce to you today that the winner of this year's IDG Winners 12 Awards is Debbie.